looking face to face with that circumstance, so that circumstance with the enemy, and say you are not crossing this line. And therefore, this you are taking your stand. You. I speak what the word of God says. Hallelujah. So he said, we have obtained like precious faith through the righteousness of God. The word truth there is in. In the righteousness of God. Hallelujah. We, we obtained this faith. We were given this faith by divine allotment, by divine inheritance. In the righteousness of God. So in other words, the object of our faith is the righteousness of God. The object of our faith is the righteousness of God. So in other words, the reason why I was given this faith as an inheritance was because I saw the righteousness of God. Are you following me here? <laughs> Those of you here, are you following what I'm talking about here? I received by inheritance, by divine allotment, faith. But I received this faith because I saw the righteousness of God. I embraced the righteousness of God. Had I not done that, I could not have had this faith. And so that is why you see, I keep telling us here over and over again that Christian faith, biblical faith is not self-determination. There is nothing wrong with self-determination in its self. But that biblical faith is different from self-determination. So I can be self-determined as a Christian, but the reason for my being self-determined is because I have seen the righteousness of God. Some other persons can be self retirement without seeing the righteousness of God. And so there's only any person can do about that. He's self retirement because there's something else he's seen. Listen, you cannot be determined over something if you have not seen something. There's a conviction you have. Either because you feel, oh, I have, I have first class, so I can make it because I made I had first class university, so there's no place I, I will enter that will be refused, or because I'm a man, or because I believe the power of the mind, or because of this, because of that. So there are many reasons why folk we self-determine. In our own case as believers, our self-determine self-determination is hinged on the righteousness of God. Let me read Romans. Chapter 1, verses 16 and 17. It says, verse 16, Romans 1, For I am not ashamed of the gospel of Christ, for it is a part of God unto salvation to everyone that believeth, to the Jews first, and also to the Greeks. So, the gospel of Christ, which is the grace of Christ, the message of the grace of Christ, is God's power to produce result, to produce salvation. Salvation is the answer to every question in your life. Salvation is the answer. It is the, the answer that God has given to any and every issue in your life. That is what salvation is. So it's available to all, everyone that believeth. It's verse 17 we want to concentrate on. Verse 17, for therein is righteousness of God revealed. In the message of the gospel, the righteousness of God is revealed. Don't forget, Peter tells us that we obtain this faith by divine allotment and inheritance in the righteousness of God. So the righteousness of God was the object of our faith. And is still the object of our faith. Is what we see that makes our faith to function properly. Hallelujah. 
For there is the doctrine of God revealed. How? From faith to faith. Hallelujah. From faith to faith. The word from there in the Greek means out of faith. The righteousness of God is revealed in the message of the gospel. So when you are teaching or preaching or proclaiming the message of the grace of Christ, which is the gospel, in that message, we find a revelation of the righteousness of God. And it says that this righteousness comes out of faith and then springs to faith. Out of faith into faith. From faith to faith means out of faith into faith. So what that happens, what, what that means is that when you saw the righteousness of God, it came out of a faith that was deposited in your heart. Amen? By divine inheritance. Let me explain this again so you understand what I'm talking about properly. An unsaved man is sitting somewhere hearing the message of the gospel, of the grace of Christ. And that is what God has done for him, irrespective of him. What God did for him without considering who he was. Let's assume he was a notorious criminal and he has done a lot of evils, including murders, theft, and so many things, robbery. So he's notorious known as a notorious entity but he's sitting down there and he's hearing the message of the grace of God the gospel that all his sins are forgiven past present and future that God has made provisions for him to be saved irrespective of whatever he has done in the past and that in short, in advance, God has declared him righteous. That all he needed to do is to believe in Jesus. That once he believes in Jesus, he obtains that status of being declared not guilty of any offense. Because in the first place, God is holding nothing against him. And so, as he's hearing that message, what is he seeing? He's seeing the righteousness of God. How that God in his righteousness because he is righteous. Now, in the God, God is doing this for all because he, God, is righteous. Not because you are righteous. God is righteous. Because God is righteous, apart from us, apart from this notorious uh, entity, criminal, he declared him righteous, forgave his sins and iniquities without asking for his impute in the matter. For him to believe that message, faith must be imparted into his heart. And so God imparts that faith. That's what means that this righteousness that is written in the gospel, it springs from faith. It comes out of faith. And then now that he has received the righteousness out of faith in Jesus, then we are told that this same righteousness leads into faith. Out of faith into faith. So in other words, our faith from beginning to last is centered around the righteousness of God. 